Hi everyone, welcome to another video of Roman Just Codes. I'm Roman, and in this installment of the Angular PWAs and Google Maps video series, I'll be building up on previous videos where I've been creating an Angular PWA with a Google Map, with custom marker pins, adding route polylines between the location markers, and in this video, I'll add a custom info window that upon tapping on a pin, shows more information about the distance in time between the marker pins or how long the driving is both distance and time wise. You can either follow along using the GitHub repo from the previous episode or grab the GitHub repo of this completed project. Let's proceed. So what we'll accomplish is showing a custom info window or pill that slides up from the bottom of the screen on top of the map and display a custom message, the distance in time for the source, the truck, to arrive at its destination, the red marker. The first thing that I'll do is, in the map page component, create an event listener for my source marker, marker start. The event will be click, so when the user either taps or clicks on the pin, I'll display the info window. Let's create a default Google Maps info window so you see what it is that we're replacing. An info window is nothing more than a component provided by Google Maps API to display some sort of popover for information on the map. At a minimum, it requires a content property which you could assemble by putting together an HTML string and it will be parsed as HTML if you want. After creating it, you can invoke its open method, passing the reference to the map in question and the marker that will trigger this info window. But do we really need to use that old looking popover? Let's not settle for this. You can come up with anything else that's more modern looking and that goes with your user experience and theme. So I came up with this. Let me show you. In my map page component, I'll set up a simple structure, a div called map pill, which will encapsulate the info in a nice pill looking panel that will slide out from the bottom of the screen. An inner div container called UPS pill logo I'll show the app logo on one side of the custom info window pill. Another inner div container called UPS pill content. This will wrap the main content that I want to display. Inside of it, two child labels, one called UPS pill label. I'll add some bogus message here for now. And another div called UPS pill distance time. I'll display in the same line the distance in time between the two locations in an interpolated fashion. Let's add some CSS for it. For the map pill, I'll add a white background. Position fixed since I want it to be fixed at the bottom of the screen, but will slide out on the negative Y axis. 25 pixels from the bottom of the screen once it's in place. Left zero, right zero to stick it to the sides. Margin of 12 pixels all around. Very pronounced rounded corners, so 50 pixels should do. Internal padding of 12 pixels. Let's add some shadow for depth. And my usual CSS flexbox styles, display flex, align item center. Save and refresh. Wait, 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 we're not done yet. It's just so you see the progress. This is still rough. Let's add the pill logo.
I'll add another SVG I created located in my assets images folder called UPS small logo. This is what it looks like. Let's do the usual background image properties on the CSS. I'll make it 50 pixels in dimension. And there's my logo. Let's add now the styles for the content. I'll do a margin left of 12 pixels. I'll make the label the same brown color I'm using for my theme with a font size of 1 EM. The distance and time label will be gray with a font size of 0.7 EM. That nasty error I'm getting in the terminal is of course, because it's looking for a non-existent distance in time property, which I'll add right now. I'll make them strings with some default values for testing. Okay, coming along so far. I hate that default font, so as always, let me go grab a Google font to apply to my project. I'll spare you that part, and I'll just grab one I have handy, and I'll drop its link in the index.html. Then I'll apply it globally via the body tag in the styles.scss file. Font is called Poppings. Yes, go ahead, make fun of it. All I know is that it's looking cool. With that in place, let me explain how we will do the animation using a CSS transition. We'll first render the pill out of view by setting the bottom property to negative 200 pixels for when it's out of view, and then switch it back to 25 pixels for when it's visible. So we'll add the transition property the property on which the CSS transition will apply, in our case, the bottom property. So we'll add the transition property, the property on which the CSS transition will apply, in our case, the bottom property, and the time in seconds it will take to change from one value to another. 0.5 seconds seems reasonable. Let's add now the required CSS and code to make this happen. Back to the map page component CSS, let's add transition bottom 0.5 seconds. The bottom to be negative 200 pixels, so always out of view initially. And the responsible for the flipping from in and out of view will be a class called map pill show, which will hold the value of bottom 25 pixels important so it overrides the existing value of negative 200 pixels. In the markup, we will need an ng class that will respond to a property change in order to trigger the class being added. So add the class map pill show only if a property show map pill is true. I know we don't have this property yet, so let's create it. Show map pill type boolean now inside the click listener for the marker start i'm so happy to get rid of this and just replace it with 
this dot show map pill equals true. This will trigger the change so the class gets applied and the info window pill goes up to 25 pixels. Okay, so how to dismiss it now? I can make it toggle, but it will look a little bit weird. Let's make it so that when you click anywhere outside of the pin, it dismisses this pill. Let's wire up a listener to the map. So when the user clicks on the map, it dismisses the info pill. We will use this listener for other purposes later, so we'll use it here for this purpose now. Flip the value to false, save. Click, show pill, click outside, hide the pill. Nice. Let's do one more improvement to this. Let's make it so that when the user clicks on the pin, not only displays our custom info pill, but it centers the map around that pin. I'll create a new method called onCenterMap, and inside call the map method pan2, which requires a location as a parameter, in our case, the source location. Now let's invoke it right after flipping show map pill to true. Save and refresh. Click, center, and show. Nice. I can move it, and when I click again, it recenters the map around that pin, exactly as I'm expecting. Awesome. Now, for the final piece, let's remove the hard coded values for distance and time and replace it by the actual values we get from the Google Directions API response object. In my set route polyline method, is where I handle the request and the response. Let's use the Chrome Developer Tools to inspect the response. Let's put a breakpoint. Check this out. The response object brings a bunch of useful properties and metadata. Response has a routes array property, and routes has a property called legs. Legs represent each one of the lines that make up the whole route. Every turn you take, every corner you turn, every street you drive is a step in the leg. We will only focus on only two properties of a leg, the distance and duration. But hey, if you want to implement your own turn-by-turn -turn web app, Uber style, this is where the secret sauce lives. So feel free to dissect this object and its properties. So again, back to distance and duration. They both have a property called text, which gives you the text representation of their corresponding values in a friendly way. Ready to consume. Let's go ahead and use those. So all I'll do is just pull those two values out of the response routes legs. Wait, I'll save a variable and do it like this. I'll store the object in one called distance info. I'll pull the distance dot text out, save it in this dot distance. Also the duration.txt, save it in this.time. And there you go. Pulling the actual values of the distance between these two location points using the directions API and parsing the response returned by the direction service route method. Nice. Now you can go to town implementing your own custom info window or pill or whatever you want to do. Even if you want to use the default info window, I'm cool. All I know is that I will use it. 
Well, I hope this video was useful, so stay tuned for more upcoming map-related video tutorial episodes in this Angular PWA and Google Maps series. That's it for this video, so please stay tuned for more upcoming videos. Hit the subscribe button to stay updated, and please like this video if you found it useful. Thank you so much for watching.